Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. I've got a couple of paintings here that were given to me recently. They uh, they actually came with a little bit of e-waste and people drop e-waste off to my shop all the time. And half the time when they're cleaning out their shed, they just drop other stuff off as well. The lady didn't want anything for them. They're, they're reasonably early. They're probably not in 20s or so. And they are original oil paintings, but they're not signed. And I don't think they're of any enormous value. But I quite like the look of them. And uh, they remind me of Australian bush scenes. There's a sort of a, a, a wattle look there. Mountains similar to what you'd find in Australia. Uh, they look like gum trees or sort of along the side there. And the, the other one's much the same. Probably the same artist. And they're more like your, um, your river red gums. And some rolling hills. A bit of cattle. So yeah, very sort of typical Australian scenes. Uh, now the reason I'm filming these is I'm going to fix them up and I'll show you a few tricks I use when I'm fixing up prints and paintings for, for sale in the shop. But I'll probably be keeping these because we actually have a couple inside that match similar era and a similar type of um, scenery and similar style. So whether they're all painted by the same person I'm not sure. As I said, I don't think they're a valuable painting. They're more of an early sort of formula painting and if you look at the leaves on the trees... They're really kind of just done by dabbing a brush. Um, and it's usually evident because sometimes you see leaf patches where there's actually no branches even going to. Uh, and that's sort of typical of, of some of these sort of mass-produced uh, formula paintings. And very often you see this scenario with a, a body of water in the middle with reflections and mountains in the background. It is a, a sort of a painting formula, but they do look nice. And I, as I said, I like these because it's a bit of an Australian type theme or feel. Now, what I'm going to do, this one doesn't have glass. It's clearly been broken. And this one is glassed, but it has a goldish frame and a sort of a goldy, or a sort of a gold colored uh, matte border. So to match the ones inside, I'm going to take that one out and actually spray it black, a matte black, because the ones inside are much the same as this one. But obviously we need to cut a piece of glass for this. And I will probably just respray a little bit because there's areas where perhaps the silverfish have eaten it away. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do a bit, it's a fairly simple restoration on these two. I'm not going to touch the artworks themselves. They look okay. They don't look overly dirty. Uh, so they'll be fine. We'll just fix up the frames, cut a piece of glass. This one's a little bit loose in the corners of the frame, so we'll clamp and glue that and probably put a, a thin nail through. I'll show you how I fix those up. Uh, probably a new piece of hanging wire. Looks like someone was in a nailing frenzy when they attached that. Oh, look at the other side. That's, that's incredible. Anyway, um, we'll fix that up. There's nothing left of the old paper that was on the back of it. Uh, that doesn't matter. We'll probably put some new nails in to hold it hold it in. Uh, I don't actually have a staple gun that's good enough to do pictures, but um, I'll show you how I do put old nails in to hold pictures back together. There's a little bit of a trick I use for that. Uh, and as far as the corners go, as far as the mitres go, uh, one of the things to look for, and I know these are old, and, and clearly you can see by the back of that one it's old, in the more modern ones, you'll see staples. Uh, you'll see like a masonite perhaps on the back for a 1970s one. Um, so there's a number of ways of telling they're old. But look at the corner of the mitre on this one. You can see that the gap has opened up ever so slightly on the inside. And that's happened because over 100 years or so, timber will shrink this way. It won't shrink lengthways. So a timber stick won't actually get shorter, but the wider the frame, the more noticeable the shrinkage will be inwards, and it actually slightly alters the bevel, and you will get a gap in the middle, whereas it's tied on the corner. And you can really notice that on a genuine antique 1800s frame with a wide frame, you really do notice that the timber has shrunk down this way, and the side one shrunk in that way, and it does leave a gap on the inside corner. So that's one way of identifying a really early frame because some of the frames that come out of China these days are made to look antique 
and if you look at the back of them and see that the mitre is absolutely razor thin perfect you'll know that it's not an antique frame all right so we'll knock these apart um, we don't need to touch the frame on this one as in I think it's strong enough but we'll take the painting out we'll take the glass out we'll clean it up and we'll try and respray that border and the frame and then once we've finished that one we'll attack this one and I'll cut a piece of glass for it so this gold one has got the brown paper on the back but it's very brittle and tatty so we'll take all that off uh, it's got some large eye bolts there and some good heavy wire the wire might be okay to reuse I'll probably put some smaller eyelets in there so we'll clean this one up and uh, we'll get the picture and the backing out and then we can do a bit of painting perhaps. So all the old paper fell off pretty easily. It's very brittle. I've untangled the um, picture hanger wire and I've just been getting these nails out. I'm just using some large pincers and I find that they pull out fairly easy and these pincers are quite sharp on the edge so I can grab the nail and lever it out right on the edge there and they, they pull out nice i may even reuse these nails because i like to use the old rusty nails rather than have something shiny and new or staples i don't really like staples and pictures all right i've just got a visitor hello coco coco a boxer puppy who's growing up and she's always curious on what i'm doing in the shed so she's coming for a bit of a sticky beak okay so all the nails are out this um, backing board will lift up now and we'll see what we can find. All right, it's just one piece by the looks of it. Well, the matting has been, looks like it's been glued down. Yeah, we'll have to see if we can separate that. And it looks like it will peel apart um, because I want to obviously paint that and I clearly don't want to paint over the top of the painting. So we'll deal with that in a tick. Um, but everything looks all right. There appears to be no damage. The painting looks substantially cleaner now that it's out from behind the dirty glass. We'll take the glass out as well. We'll give it a good clean up. And we'll just, just clean all the old remnants of paper off the back of the frame. We'll run a screwdriver around in the, the rabbit area, the recess where it all sits. Make sure it's clean. And then we can give the frame a paint. And once we separate the matting, we'll give that a paint as well. And then we've just got to put it back together. This is the easy job, this one. Now this corner looks fairly loose, so I think we'll be able to pry it up and perhaps just run a screwdriver around. And it feels like it was glued and it's going to lift okay, so that's good. Shouldn't damage the painting or anything. And the painting has been painted straight onto this board. Interesting to see if, if there is any signature under there, but I doubt there will be. Because this never would have been reframed. I think this would have been original. And what would be the point in signing something under the matting so that no one ever sees your name? So that came off all right. It was definitely glued. Uh, some parts just fell off quite easily. Whereas other parts, you can see over here, it actually took a little bit of the paper off the back of the mat. Um, but that's fine. It'll um, it'll glue back over that nicely. Uh, there's no doubts that the painting is an original painting. Uh, and there's no sign of any signature anywhere. Not that I think that would make any difference to the value anyway. Uh, it's purely a, a decorative piece. Um, so that's good. That come off in one piece. It's undamaged. So we can give that a gentle wipe over soon just to get any dust off it and it can be painted. And I'll clean the frame up and we'll paint that as well. So it's time to give these pieces a bit of a spray. I've just got a matte black. Um, it's only a cheap and nasty um, discount shop spray pack, but it should be fine for this. And I don't want it glossy, I want it matte. So what I'm going to do is I'll give it um, both the matte here and the frame. I'm just going to give them very light coats from a distance and um, we'll do it in two or three goes just so that we don't get any runs and we get a nice even finish I think a lot of people run into trouble with spray painting by just doing too thick a coat and it gets blotchy and you can get runs although at least we won't get runs with it sitting flat 
There was a couple of spots on that corner. Hopefully they'll cover over. So I think that will just about do for the first coat. And then we'll get a much better cover on the second coat. And I'm going to do the same with the frame. So just not too heavy. In fact, you can get a pretty good effect by just lightly misting it and not even completely covering it. But in this case, I want it black to match the ones inside. So I'll give this two or three coats as well. And then we can get onto the glass part of this uh, video. And I have to cut a piece for the other one as well. I will also touch up the other frame too. It's just got a couple of spots where it's a little thin and I had to re-glue it. And there's a couple of spots where I've sanded it back to get it neat. So we'll give that a coat as well. And I'll get back to you when all the painting's finished. So it's a couple of weeks later now. Christmas got in the road. Uh, it's a few days after Christmas and I've got to finish this project off. This was the gold one. So it's all... Um, was painted not long after you saw it last time and it's been sitting around and unfortunately something was rested on it. My shed got a bit disorganised over Christmas and it's actually just marked a couple of spots there. But we can um, we can do a little bit of cheating if you don't tell anyone. And with a little black texter, I reckon that will just about disappear. So that's done this one. I'm happy with how it's come up. The matte black looks pretty good. And that text will dull off nicely. You'll hardly ever see it. Uh, so I now need to assemble this. And it's just a matter of putting it back together. And I'll show you how I put the nails in to secure it at the back. And then we need to cut a piece of glass for the other one. The other one's all painted as well. But we'll finish this one off first. Now I do have to glue this border back onto the painting. Because it's a little loose in the frame. And if I don't glue it, it will move a bit. And what will happen will you'll actually see um, this part side of where it actually tore you actually see that in the from the front of the painting. So I want to glue it down so it's one piece again. I've just got some PVA glue here and I've got a sacrificial brush because it won't ever be any good again. And I'll just spread this out. I'll put the the border mat down on it um, nice and square and central. And then I'll place the sheet of glass over it and a little bit of weight and we'll leave that dry. And then we can just whack it all together. There we go. I've glued that down. I've put the glass over it. I'll put a bit of extra weight on it. And we'll leave that to dry. I really like it with the black border. It really makes the colours in the painting sort of really project. So uh, I think it's much better than the gold border. All right. We've got the painting and the backing back in the frame. So this one's just basically being assembled. I've got a box of nice old rusty small nails here, perfect for the job. I keep these for reframing picture, vintage pictures and uh, paintings. And now this one's looking a little messy. I've done most of it. I'll show you how I put these nails in on this last section. But for some reason, the old nails were on an angle. And I don't know why they were on an angle, but by putting my new ones straight, they're going in the same holes, but it looks a little messy. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the back of it anyway. So I've got three sides done. The other problem with this one is it's a little bit difficult because the backing is almost flush with the frame. So there's really not a lot of timber to work with. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing... I'll show you how I do this. I'm grabbing some of these little nails. And the first thing to do is to find the hole where they came out of. And it's really just below the edge of the frame there. That's it there. So I'm going to put these in straight. And here's how I put them in. Because it's almost impossible to try and hammer them in. You want the nail as flat as you can against the back of the board. And if you try and hammer and even slide something across, you're going to jar the frame out. There's a risk of cracking the, the glass so I just press them in. Now, in this frame, it's got a bit of a moulding on the outside, so I'm using a piece of dowel. But on a straight frame, you could use just a, a scrap bit of flat timber. And the trick to this is using some adjustable pliers or channel locks or whatever you call them. And get it so that you can open it out 
and just capture the end of the nail head with the top jaw and the bottom one will press on the, the scrap timber or the dowel so that you don't mark the edge of the frame and pretty well we just press them in and I find it works really well no risk of cracking the glass and uh, you can end up with the nails pretty flat against the board so I'll just do these couple and then all we need to do is put some little eye hooks in and I've got some of those as well some vintage rusty ones that will be perfect then we'll put some hanger wire this one will be finished and then we'll cut the glass for the other piece so we'll put the timber where it's firm against the edge of the frame open our pliers out just grab the head hold it flat with this finger and because we already had it started it shouldn't slip and then just a, a gentle squeeze we don't want to push it in too far and we don't want to cause undue pressure that will actually bend the nail and there you go that's fine nice and secure nice and flat and if we were to put some tape over the edge here um, like some picture type finishing tape which I'm not going to worry with but if you wanted to do it that would pretty well look professional so I'll just do three more and then we'll put the um, finishing touches on all right seeing so I had the tape handy I thought I might as well finish it off it does seal it up nicely it looks a lot neater and it keeps the dust out because there was quite a gap along one edge so it does that really does finish it off nicely even though it is the back now I've put the eyelets on this one you can see one there they're fairly large ones but they're they'll be fine for this old frame and they screwed in nicely now I've I work on about one third so you need to be sure which way is the top because the last thing you want to do is get it all finished be very proud of your work and turn it over and the things upside down so make sure you know which way is the top and just measure the sides and about one third down is a good spot to hang the frame from hang the picture from and i've got some old picture wire found in someone's shed many years ago extremely handy stuff and what we're going to do is just tie it off and i'll show you how i tie them so i'm not sure how easy this will be to see but feed plenty of wire through i like to come through from the top and this is called a clove hitch so you've come through from the top now with the loose end you go over the top i'll try and keep my fingers out of the road so over the top of that one back through the loop or through the eyelet and then up through up through the, between those two and if you pull that loose end yeah it's probably looking a bit tricky to to show you there if you google clove hitch that's the knot i'm doing and it's probably much easier to show on rope rather than wire but it will lock on itself and there's no way known that will slip so we'll pull that tight and with the remainder here we'll just wrap it around a few turns so that it's neat and that will not come out and not slip that's maybe why it's called a knot so that's all we need we'll just trim that off neat so there's no sharp bits of wire and we'll do the same to the other end we won't have the wire completely tight because we want it uh, a little loose to be able to grab the picture hook on the wall but we don't want it too loose that when it's on the hook it's up above the frame or even the picture hook is above the frame so a little bit of slack just so that you can hook it and it hooks probably an inch or two below the top and it should hang nicely so we'll tie off the other end and then this one's done all done and ready to hang except we had a bit of a problem let me turn it over now one end i didn't realize but the little screw eyelet that I put through was a little bit long and because this frame has a sort of a concave section it wasn't as thick as I remembered it to be and it poked through and made a, it look terrible and it looks even worse now because I've had to sand it back I've filled it with a bit of putty it's nice and smooth again so we'll give that a touch up with the spray and then this one is finished and now we just cut the glass on the other one and we'll put that together and now to cut some glass for this other one i've marked along with a texture a fine point texture and i've got i made sure that edge of the glass was square 
and I've got a, a nice straight edge here and I've got a basic glass cutter that uh, it's better than your cheapies it's a German made one just bought it on eBay and it's been great it has the different wheels that um, it seems to work fine I'll probably do a separate video on cutting glass because this video is going to go too long if I explain all this so a bit of pressure and one score and I find just uh, having a piece of dowel underneath makes it easy to snap and a little bit of pressure and beautiful now we just need to trim up the far end now same deal here just make sure we've got the right width so that the cutter runs along the uh, the texture mark and one score and a snap there you go our glass is uh, cut the size hopefully I measured straight and it'll fit in the frame and the glass went in beautifully I've assembled this one exactly the same as the other one and I didn't have any issues with uh, with the screws poking through the frame this frames much thicker too because it's just a bevel so it went together really well very happy with it the black looks awesome I reckon it's so much better I mean this one was black anyway but it just looks really fresh uh, and I did put the tape around this one as well on the back although this one had quite a large recess so I had to kind of fold the tape down but it does hide the nails and it looks good and it's going to keep the dust out and you can see the wire on this one as well so this one's totally ready to hang I've got a bit of slack there but it doesn't reach the top nicely tied off so very happy with these I'll just have to wait till the paint dries on the other one and I'll find somewhere inside to hang them and I'll show you what they look like and I'll give you a quick look at the other ones we've got in there as well okay just to finish off this video we're inside now I've got these ones propped on the piano and it's a bit hard to film without getting major reflections in the glass so I'm trying different angles so they're the two we've just finished uh, this is one that's on the wall here that we picked up quite a long time ago and very similar as you can see and the one over the other side here and we're in the lounge uh, this one's also very similar um, so yeah they are all about the same size they just vary slightly uh, they might look on a funny angle because I'm holding the camera if I hold it straight up we get a lot of reflection but um, look they look really good they go well against our bright blue walls and um, yeah we'll find some way to put these two possibly out in the entrance hallway here um, so there you go hope you got something out of this video you might have learned a few tricks about framing and I'll do another one on cutting glass at some stage if you're interest, interested let me know anyway thanks for watching I'll catch you in the next video it'll be something to do with recycling in some form or another I'm doing a lot of repair videos at the moment because I've got lots of projects on the go and I might as well film them. Alright, this reflection's terrible. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.